You knew Jamie Ginn. I did. Not well, but we used to talk every few weeks or so. I say used to because he, like so many senior bikies, is now dead. We're told he had a seizure in the Perth Watch House about 7pm on Tuesday night. Was there after being picked up for firearms and drug offences. What was he like? I reckon there are three types of bikies. There are the blokes who join a gang because they want to use that status to further their criminal careers. Membership is a means to an end rather than an end in itself. Then there are the guys that really shouldn't be there but drift in because they're at a stupid stage of their life. Then there's the third and probably the rarest type of bikey. That's the man who is genuinely seeking the camaraderie, however dubious it might be, that comes with being a member of an outlaw motorcycle club. People who like the idea of knowing someone has their back. Jamie Ginn, I think, was the third type. How'd you get to know him? First time we spoke was after this went to air on March 1. There aren't many clear images of Band-Aid Boy and his mates displaying their gang tats in the lead up to the cops handing over the paperwork. Mm, what did he say? He said, it's Band-Aid Boy here, I have a bone to pick with you. He was pissed off with this crack, the latter of which has defected from the rebels to a new gang called Johnson & Johnson. It was a throwaway line, but Jamie hated the use of the word defection. He stressed that he was a one-club man. I said fair enough, and from that point on, he would send the occasional text commenting about certain things in the news. So no code of silence. Look, the rebels have never strictly adhered to the old bikey codes of conduct. You couldn't shut Alex Vella up. I find this poem very hard to write. Nick's life and future was bright. He was the national president when the rebels first moved into WA in the mid-90s, very vocal when they did their first national run into this state. We aren't here to prove that we can misbehave. We are here to prove that we're all the Harleys right across from one side of the country to the other. Back then, the WA club was run by a bloke named Richard Roberts, who went by the not-so-imaginative nickname Rebel Rick, also quite talkative. I'm just sick of all of this harassment. That's not everything, OK? That's what we are. called police harassment. Vela is in exile in Cyprus, I think, and Rick was shot dead in Canberra in 2009. Nick Martin also liked to chat. Are you an innocent man? Always. As we know, Nick's also dead. Do we see a pattern here? What did Jamie do for work? Bricky. Ran a good business, didn't rip his clients off. When everyone else was charging three bucks a maxi, he kept his prices reasonable because he'd been through a few cycles and knew that at some stage it'd be back down at 90 cents a brick. He was first in the headlines in 2017 when he and a half a dozen other rebels at the Clarkson chapter, I think it was, went to court after belting the crap out of a bloke three years earlier. He went to jail for five years for that assault. That's part of documented history. What's not on the historical record is that when Jamie came out, he really didn't like Nick Martin. He, like many other senior rebs, knew Martin was ripping off the club. Jamie had laid bricks at Martin's new house. I think it was in Lansdale, but I'm not sure. He was one of many rebels who worked on that home, but one of the few who actually got paid in full. He also clashed with Martin over a young bloke who wanted to leave the Rebs to pursue a sporting career. Jamie defied Martin and gave him his blessing to leave on good standing. Did he have a family? He had a son and a daughter that I know of. His son was a semi-professional fighter at one stage. Don't know if it was boxing or Muay Thai or whatever. But he ended up going to jail himself for assault, I think it was, and that ended his career in the ring. I think his dad felt guilty about that, that the life chosen by a father may have affected the son. Mm, so Jamie gets out of jail. What next? The rebels start falling apart. Nick Martin ends up dead. The cops are all over the club targeting senior leadership. Jamie was about the last man standing there for a while. He knew the cops were targeting him because of that. The cops are hammering Jamie because they reckon if they take him down, there's a chance the whole Rebels Outlaw Motorcycle Club in WA will become a total rebel that couldn't organise a club picnic, let alone a club run. He was the highest profile charge at Rendezvous in Scarborough when the police gate crashed that poolside party. That really pissed him off. Where's the war on pedophiles and the war on government corruption? I don't live in a free country. We're what we want. We can't hang around and we want. F*** this system. We're here to stay. Things changed for Jamie in May of this year. He started getting paranoid. He was convinced that he was being followed everywhere all the time. Probably was. Yeah, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. This was different though. He believed Waypole was using shadowy private contractors to tail him on the road 30 vehicles at a time. He thought drones the size of cars were tracking him in the sky, claimed they could travel at 230 kilometres an hour. That's footage he took on his camera of what he thought was a drone following his car. 
and that was shot from his backyard. He sounded delusional. He was worried that he sounded delusional. He was so concerned about hidden cameras in his house, he started taking screws out of his furniture to inspect them. So what happened in the watch house? Cops say it's natural causes, a seizure. Quite likely that was the case. Jamie was juiced up, and that's never great for long-term health. He had been unwell in the days leading up to Tuesday, but I don't think he went and saw a doctor, probably because he didn't trust anyone. The key question at the coronial inquest, which must be held because he was in police custody when he died, is what happened during the arrest that preceded his incarceration? Chances are it was by the book, and Jamie Jinn was going to die that night whether he was in a police watch house or at home watching TV on the couch. I bet I'll be. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.